Hey YouTube, you have Leonard here. Bring guys and gals, Kanojo Okarishimasu. Rent a girlfriend, we're here, chapter 232. Um, we're back. We're back in Tokyo, or wherever they are. <laughs> I'll say Tokyo. But we're back home. And at this point in time, two days have passed in the timeline rent a girlfriend. So after we see Chizu at the pool, we don't get anything else from the rest of the wine strip. We don't get the return back really, except for maybe a couple panels with Chizudu trying to run away from Kazuya, Luka spouting her usual nonsense. But basically where we stand right now, and I talked about this a little bit last week, and I am working the Chizudu video, is that we're entering an arc. And in this arc, this is the first time that we've seen Chizudu, for a prolonged period of time anyway, genuinely confused, afraid, and actively avoiding Kazuya. I know it's happened in isolated instances before in the past, but we can tell at this point that she 100%, we know she loves Kazuya, or part of her does. <laughs> but she's very conflicted as to what to do, therefore she cannot face him, and she's kind of, she's lost. She's lost right now. So, I'm of the mindset that in this arc that we're going to be getting, and this chapter kind of lends itself to it, that we're going to be focusing a lot more on Chizudu and her feelings, and her trying to sort that out. So, in this chapter specifically, we get a lot of stuff with Kazuya. Kazuya is just kind of mulling over the kiss again as usual, so that's nothing new. And he's just thinking to himself, like, she had to have known that I was going to confess as well. And then we have the kiss. So, what does all of this mean? And Kazuya, like a rational person, the only thing that he can conclude is the fact that she must have known I was going to confess, so the kiss had to mean something. But Chizuru's words from last chapter, and just in general, her overall actions, it hasn't been fused. He earnestly doesn't know what's on her mind. And I think that kind of like, it sucks a bit for Kazi. And again, I know sometimes we get on Kazi for his lack of action. There's not really much that he can do here. Like even in this chapter towards the ending, we see Kazi try to think of any way that he can talk to Chizu. He's like, well, maybe if I go to school, I shouldn't be at school this time. Um, we have to find an activity. We just need to talk. And yes, that's exactly what you guys need to do. You need to just have a chat and talk. But Chizu doesn't want to have a conversation with him because Chizu doesn't even know what she wants. She's still straddling between the professionalism of the rental situation. Do I actually, well, she knows she likes him. My feelings for Kazuya, is this right? So she's all over the place right now. <clears throat> all in all, I just think that, while I'm a little bit frustrated because I thought that we were and should have been in the end game, we are gonna get again additional development as relates to Chizu specifically, her character, and we should come out by the end of this and say, like, hey, 100%, Chizudu does, in fact, like Kazuya, and Chizudu, this is her action plan. Whatever it be, and we're talking about in chat before on the Twitch site, and of course, follow me on Twitch, link description box down below. But someone brought up, again, Chizudu quitting her agency, possibly, is something that could happen. Do we get an Umi conflict? Does Umi end up, pop, like, popping up? There's so many things we have to wonder about. But the one thing I do want to say is that, as frustrating as this may be, and I trust me, I hear you guys, like... Check out the live reaction. I, I am not happy, per se, where we are, because it's just not much is happening. And it's just like we're kind of setting things up. There's a lot of setup. And for someone who, again, thought we're about to end everything, I'm, I'm annoyed. But I don't think that we should take this, in my personal opinion, and that we should now kill Chizudu. I think it's important to understand that with Chizudu specifically, she's going through a lot of stuff right now in her mind. She doesn't know what she wants. This is the first time she's, at least we know from the canon story, that she's liked anyone. So she truly doesn't know what she's doing. And whether fair or unfair or whether because of her own actions, she does believe that she's muddied the water because she never anticipated falling for Kazuya, for a client. And in her mind, she thinks this is something that is bad. That's just a philosophy that is intrinsic to Chizu at this point in time. So now that she feels that she's actually developed feelings, she feels as if she's betraying her business contract, the rental agency, all these different stuff. She feels that she's lacking professionalism, and this is earnestly tearing at her. I don't agree with it. I think it's a little bit ridiculous. Realistically, just thinking from, like I guess, my mindset, um, from a working standpoint, sorry, these things happen. We, we get it. We get it. But this is something that clearly matters to Chizu, and therefore it is earnestly tearing her apart, and I feel bad for her. And the biggest scene for me that was impactful is where Kazuya goes to the door now. He's trying to catch up, do the small talk. He rings the doorbell. She's not there. And he's just like talking to himself. He's just like, huh, she's not home. 
And he's just talking. He's saying all this out loud. But then we get that panel. We see Chizuru just sitting there behind the door, sad. Her heart is beating. Part of her probably wants to answer the door. Other part of her is scared and terrified out of her mind because she doesn't know how to confront Kazuya. That's why at the train station as well. She's so quick to try and like get away. I need to go somewhere because she can't be around him. She doesn't know. If she doesn't know how she feels, then how is she supposed to actually have an earnest conversation with Kazuya? And I know that, again, some of us may hate that, but that is where she is right now in terms of her character and what she is feeling. It just is what it is. It just is what it is. So my prediction for next chapter is that it seems as if she hit the door by accident. And by hitting the door, I'm just looking at the panel quickly. She's right next to the door. So the clang that we hear at the end of this chapter, she probably hit the doorknob or the chain or something. And Kazuya hears that. So Kazuya now knows that someone's home. Chizuru is in a predicament because now he knows that she's probably there behind the door listening. And this is going to cause even more issues. Someone mentioned this on the Twitch side. I don't know if it was you, Josh, or if it was you, Kazuya Senpai. Um... But this idea that basically Yai Mori will probably pop up now that they're back home. It should happen because she has to be debriefed on everything that's taken place. But maybe she pops up and that ends up saving Chizuru because Kazuya forgets about the clang. And then he just assumes that, oh, it was nothing. I don't think that Chizuru and Kazuya are going to talk to each other. I think it might be too early for that. So there's going to be some type of an interruption that causes him to forget about it. But it makes for a cliffhanger. So what can we do? What can we do? Yo, Sahil, welcome, welcome. Welcome everybody on the Twitch side. Um, just very quickly before I end the video, guys, those are my thoughts. I'm just looking at the comment section on Twitch. Um, it's totally done with other than Kazi and everything. Yeah, I don't know. The, the Reddit is an interesting place, guys. The, the, the Reddit for rental girlfriend is a very interesting place that I don't necessarily love. Um, and again, I do plan on making my Chizuru video. I mentioned it kind of last week, but I am working on that because while I don't agree with what Chizuru is doing necessarily, while I think that some of the stuff she's doing is kind of dumb, again, my personal thoughts, um, I don't think we should be condemning and hating Chizuru and also twisting the things that she is doing. At the end of the day, Chizuru is just honestly confused and making bad decisions, but she's at conflict with herself. And I don't think that we should crush Chizuru because of that. I think that there's this false idea that because of how she's been throughout the story, mature, etc., that Chizuru's a mature person. Chizuru's not mature. She handles things properly in certain areas, but she also in other ways acts like a child. And I don't mean that in a negative way. She's earnestly just someone who she's trying to figure out life, trying to figure out her own emotions, and she doesn't understand a lot of things, and therefore she's taking missteps. She's the type of person who tries to act like they know what they're doing. I got this. But they're also scrambling in their mind. To me, that's not a person who 100% is mature. She's doing her best, but she doesn't fully understand what it is that she is doing. And she's at conflict. Add that on top of the fact that she's also, to be fair, all this emotional stuff of her grandmother passing and all the other stuff of her family. I feel for Chizuru. I truly do. And I don't think that people should hate on her because the way that she's acting isn't what they perceived her to be. If you perceive Chizu to be a mature, rational person, we got plenty of stuff in the manga that suggests that she is not. Kazi and her are literally the two people who have just made constant mistake after mistake in this series. And it's because of the fact that these, I mean, they're in college, but I, I consider them kids. They're kids. They're kids trying to figure out life, understand what it is that they're doing at the end of the day. It just is what it is. I'm looking at one more thing on the Twitch side. Um... Kazu can talk to Mini about what's happened during the trip and how he feels, included on how he feels about what happened to Chapel, blah, 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 blah. Um, she will know how he thought rejected with a conclusion of Shark for Cheese. I agree with that. I do agree with that. That would be interesting to have that conversation outside. That would be interesting. So imagine if Yai Mori comes through, and we know that he's going to talk to her. If they have that conversation outside, and let's just say that Chizuru is listening in on this, that'd be very, <laughs> that'd be an interesting dynamic just to have her hear Kazuya's thoughts, Yai Mori's thoughts, etc. I don't think Yai Mori would have that conversation outside the door, though. But who knows? Who knows? But nonetheless, she does have to be debriefed and understand what's taking place, and she'll be another person similar to Kudi who'd be like, Kazuya Senpai, she likes you. You need to do something. But again, Kazi's in a pickle because at the end of the day, he could have 100% resolve to do something 
if Jesudu doesn't want to hear him and wants to run away and avoids him, Kazu can't do anything. He can't force her to face her feelings, which is why this arc has to be focused on Chizudu understanding, reflecting, and facing her own feelings and determining what it is that she wants to do, or else we can't move forward. We just can't. <laughs> Negative 200 karma, dang. But everybody, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to like my content. Greatly appreciate it, as always. And with that, I am Leonard, and I am out. Take care, everybody. Peace.